Hey everyone, it's Lindsay, owner of North End Organic Nursery, and here's your Garden Minutes. Today we're going to talk about setting up your spring garden. Uh, the springtime is the first of three seasons that we have here in Idaho. I always say it's a hot sandwich. We have a cold season, um, a hot season, and then another cold season. So we've just got that hot season right in the middle, but we actually have two fantastic cold seasons. What's a cold season? So in the spring and the fall, we can actually grow quite a few vegetables that are frost tolerant. These are actual vegetables, actually, as the name implies, not fruits. So anything where you're gonna be eating the leaf, stem, or root is considered to be a vegetable. Things that you're eating the fruiting body off the plant are fruits. So things like tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, cucumbers, melons, squash. These are all fruiting plants and they do not like cold temperatures. However, those vegetables that we mentioned, they love cold temperatures. They don't want it to be freezing cold day in and day out where the ground's frozen, they can't grow. But these perfect days that we have right now where the temperatures are getting up into the 50s and 60s, um, maybe dipping below freezing at night, but it's not a hard freeze. So they do just fine and it actually makes them sweeter. These cold season veggies will actually take the carbohydrates from their root zone and put them into their leaf structure, making them far sweeter and delicious tasting. So uh, it's early March right now. Uh, spring has come a little bit early here for Idaho, but we're not complaining all that much. But there's some things that we want to think about as we're planting our gardens. Uh, first thing is weather can change. So if you're going to be transplanting out veggies that maybe have been growing inside, whether you started them yourself or they came, they've come from a greenhouse uh, where they've been cloistered and given warmer, more protected conditions, a couple of things are um, on my mind about what you want to do to make sure that you protect them. First thing is to harden them off. Hardening off vegetables and fruiting plants for that matter uh, requires you to kind of take them outside, let them get a little bit of natural sunlight, let them uh, get some of the cooler temperatures, let the wind blow on them to make them a little bit stronger before you just throw them out to the, uh, the wild environment in which they're going to live. So setting them out for a few hours every day, a little bit longer after you bring them home. Now I know the veggies that I brought back with me today from our nursery, they've been outside and they are already hardened off. So they're gonna go straight into the ground. Now, <clears throat> what I have here in front of me is floating row cover. Floating row cover has so many beneficial uses to the organic gardener and it's something that everybody should have on hand. Um, it is a thin woven material that can let light and air and even some water through uh, that protects your plants from some frost. It actually gives you about six to eight degrees of frost protection, but most importantly, it helps protect your plants from bugs. Insects in the springtime can have the highest amount of pressure on your garden plants and we wanna protect those plants. So things like uh, leaf miner uh, really badly affect plants like beets and chard. Uh, you can get cabbage looper that goes after any plant that is in the brassica family or the cruciferous family. So kale, um, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, those are all uh, victims of cabbage looper. You also have earwigs and other bugs that come on the ground side, and we can control them in other ways, but to keep the flying insects off of our plants is a huge deal. I always tell people you can spend 14 bucks on, on a piece of floating row cover now, and I will save you $50 later on from coming and having to buy organic pest controls. So, something that we're gonna do here. Today, I want to show you how to set up, um, at least this is one idea of how to set up your floating row cover, over your spring garden. Um, people, you can actually just put the floating row cover on top of the vegetables. They call it floating row cover for that reason. However, some people like to keep it tented and I'm gonna show you a tenting method and how to secure your floating row cover onto the ground. Uh, after we do that, we're going to actually prep the garden to plant some veggies and we'll get some veggies going for springtime. So first off, let's start with our floating row cover. Right here, I have a piece that's 10 feet by 12 feet. Uh, if I remember correctly, this is the 10 foot dimension. That's the 12 foot dimension. Um, it's gonna give me definitely lots extra for my bed. This bed is a four foot by eight foot, four foot wide, eight foot long. So 
this will be a, a nice 10 foot wide segment that can go over top. So I'm gonna put hoops over top of my garden bed, but before I'm gonna do that, I wanna prep my soil to make sure that the nutrients are there. Uh, I did do a fall crop. I've pulled some of the fall crop out that some of it was doing okay, but I just wanna start fresh right now. I've got some other fall crops still growing over there that overwintered and are coming back, which is one of the fun things about growing a fall crop. I've got my garlic over there. So this bed, I wanna add a little bit more nutrients. So I always like to prep my beds with nutrients in advance. You wanna put the fertility in there before you plant so that the plants have something to chew on all season long. I'm gonna be using two different products today. I'm gonna to use the azomite, which is the A to Z of minerals, and it allows uh, me to get a bunch of micronutrients into the soil. It improves flavor, improves the health of the plant. It's a really fantastic product. And then this is Down to Earth BioLife. Really great formulation for kind of an all purpose, which is what I'm gonna be growing in here. So remember, with fertilizer, we have three numbers. We have, five, for this one, it's a 542, which is NPK. The, uh, the first number, nitrogen, N, stands for uh, green and protein. So anytime you're gonna be encouraging green growth or protein synthesis, you really need the nitrogen. Too much nitrogen is a bad thing though. You wanna make sure that the nitrogen isn't overwhelming the other nutrients because nitrogen can actually block the uptake of other nutrients if it's in excess. Five is not a big number, perfect for what we're going for today. Middle number, phosphorus. Phosphorus is roots, fruits, flowers, and sweetness. So really great for my carrots, my rooting crops, and also just for that sugar synthesis that we wanna get going on in all the plants. So phosphorus is a good thing. The last one, potassium, is kind of the regulator, helps the plant deal with heat stress, cold stress, uh, water regulation. It helps the plant be vigorous and healthy. So uh, a nice hit of uh, potassium is a good thing also. This is a nice balance. Now, if we're looking to do purely fruiting vegetables like tomatoes and peppers, I would want a formulation that had a slightly larger phosphorus number in the middle, a little less nitrogen. But for what we're doing here today, this is a really nice balance. Um, really good quality ingredients in this BioLife too. I'm a big fan. So we're gonna put some of this uh, across the bed along with the azomite. I'm also gonna throw a little bit of my Gardener and Bloom planting mix. My bed's pretty full, so I don't have a lot of room, but whenever I have the opportunity, I like to put down an inch or two of the planting mix, some fresh soil, gives it a nice finished look, um, nice seed planting bed. It gives it a little extra nutrients. It has things like fat guano in it, worm castings, all kinds of fantastic nutrients in the planting mix. So I try to add a little bit of this into my garden every year. So gonna get some of this put down and we'll be right back. All right, I'm ready to put my hoops in. Again, hoops aren't mandatory. You can lay your floating row cover directly over your crops. Um, quite frankly, as the lazy gardener that I am, I've done that a lot of years where I don't put any hoops down. I wanna do things just a little bit more finished this year, so I am gonna put the hoops. These are just wire um, hoop frames. Uh, we sell them at the nursery. Um, if you aren't local, you can probably find them online somewhere. They're really just really thick, gauged, uh, wired in a way that is bendable and it can help lightly support your floating row cover. So I'm going to use one about every two feet. So for an eight foot bed, I'm going to have four to five pieces, just depending on where I start in the middle of all this, probably five. So I'm going to go ahead and space them out. Um, how many do I have here? I have six. We'll see how far I get. Start with one on each end. So super simple. I'm just going to put it in one end kind of poke it down, bend it over, poke it down. That wasn't too complicated. <laughs> um, you can get more complicated if you want to. You can get uh, like PVC pipe that you can bend similarly and then have uh, pieces of rebar on the corners that you can then thread the PVC over top of to hold in place. That's another option. I'm sure you could Google dozens more options. I'm gonna start at the end so I can do this evenly. Woo big time investment here. 
Do one in the middle. <clears throat> and these are what? Six foot. These are six foot. So here for a um, four foot wide bed, gives me a nice little arc to kind of pull the floating road cover off of my plants. And by doing it, started at the ends, and I'm kind of splitting the sides and then splitting the sides again. So I'm gonna have a total of five of these not the time to get hung up on geometry or anything fancy. Okay, my next little trick that I want to share with you all, use this one for the next bed, is how to secure the edges of your floating row cover so it doesn't blow away and it holds it nice and straight. Um, over the years, I've done everything. I've used uh, horseshoes from like a horseshoe game to kind of hold down the edges. I've used rocks, rakes, shovels, uh, all manner of things. And while that was actually not good in my tools to do that to them, they didn't work either. So what I have discovered, and the reason why they didn't work, just FYI, is that if you have this floating row cover on top of your garden bed and you just put something weighty to hold it down, uh, wind will find a way. And it'll find that one corner where it's not being held down and lift it up and sh throw that shovel off and into your neighbor's yard it goes. So I've heard, <laughs> yes, this happened to me. So I really like electrical conduit. This is a 10 foot stick of electrical conduit. It's got a nice weightiness to it. Um, nice and straight, a good length, especially for something like an eight foot long bed. Um, still easy to work with, not terribly expensive either. Somewhere in the $3 range for one of these. So I can cover my entire uh, four by eight bed with two pieces of electrical conduit. One time investment forever and ever. What I'm gonna do is lay down my electrical conduit, get that laid out straight here, and I'm gonna take some simple uh, safety pins. And I'm going to safety pin my, con my floating row cover over top of my conduit. So I'm gonna fold it over don't need to make too much of a fold. I've got quite a bit extra here considering the size of my bed. So I'm gonna be generous here and I'm actually gonna fold it over and then kind of give it an extra tuck so there's a little bit more security. And I'm just going to safety pin it. And I'll do that on the ends here. I'm gonna let a little, little bit of slack on the ends so that if I wanted to kind of gather it together, I can do that. You can take a lot of time and measure this all very carefully. I'm just not that person, people. If you haven't figured that out by now. I like to get gardening done so I can enjoy the process instead of laboring through it. <laughs> Everybody's different though. All right, let me take a, another one of these. Now I could probably put probably six or seven of these down the line, but for right now, we're just gonna do three I also recommend doing one at the very, very end to close the end piece. So around where the pipe ends up so that it doesn't slide. So I'm gonna take one safety pin and I'm going to pin it around the end. Okay, floating row cover has been attached to my electrical conduit. So. Reminder of what we're doing with our floating row cover. It is there to warm the soil, protect the plants from uh, excessive cold nights. Uh, so it's, it's kind of got a bit of a frost blanket effect to it. It's also a huge insect barrier. So we're keeping things like uh, leaf miner off of our kale, sorry, leaf miner off of our chard and beets um, and spinach. They love to get in there and they make that bubbly looking um, uh, eating area. I don't know how best to describe it. It looks like a bubble. Here, I'll put a picture up right over here. Uh, so leaf miner causes quite a bit of damage in those three crops specifically. Now with kale, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, anything in the brassica family, coal crops, cruciferous crops, uh, they are heavily beaten down by uh, cabbage looper. 
cabbage looper is that floating little moth butterfly thing that lands in your garden beds, lays eggs on your brassicas, and then when they hatch, they turn in those little itty bitty green worms and they just can cause a ton of damage really quickly. Floating row cover is the best thing you can do to prevent from having to spray for all that stuff. I think I already said that before, but anyway. Third thing is cats. In our neighborhood, I have several cats that like to come visit, including our very dear uh, uh, Oliver. Um, now that the soil is not frozen anymore, they like to scratch in it and pollute it. So um, I've already had to clean it out and kind of start with a little bit of extra freshness. Um, so this is a great way to keep cats out of your garden beds as well. So extra bonus. What I'm gonna do now is show you just how easy it is to put it over. I'm gonna grab the conduit, walk across, could use a little walkway here, and down. You can straighten it out a bit here. Um, if you wanna kind of secure it, you can use a little paper, or not paper clips, uh, laundry clothespins, clothespins along the edges here. You can bundle it up like a ponytail on the ends to keep things from getting in. Uh, but ultimately, what I have here is a great, I'm gonna roll this up just a little bit because I've got extra. I'll just put it right on the edge. Come back to the other side. And straighten it out there. Roll it up. Put it on the edge. Ta-da! Okay, now that I've done that, let's actually plant a few veggies in the beds because it's springtime and I wanna eat some fresh veggies here soon. So I'm gonna go grab my starts and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got some gorgeous veggies here that I brought back from North End Organic Nursery. Some different types of kale, some kohlrabi, perfect things to put in the ground right now. Other things I could be planting would be spinach, chard, arugula, lettuce, uh, carrots, beets, radishes, parsnips, turnips, the list goes on. If it's a root, um, stem, or leaf of a plant that you're planning on growing, then now's the time. The other exception to that would be peas. Peas are a really good cold weather crop as well, and fava beans. Uh, so you could also plant them th now too. So today I'm just gonna do a few of these guys. Come join me. So I'm gonna take my four pack here, and uh, for this first one, just going to come in about maybe a half a foot from the edge of the bed, I'm gonna use my hand just because I like to, and I'm gonna plop out my little veggie. I wanna plant it right at soil level. And then I'm gonna go about two feet over. So in this bed, it's gonna be about three across. And then what I will do is what we like to call like the biointensive method. And the biointensive method has you plant and then alternate. So while she fills in those two spaces over there, I'm going to go a little bit off from her. So I'm going to start a little bit closer to the edge for the next one. Still about a foot and a half apart from the other one. And then split the difference between the other two plants. Ooh, actually, um, yeah, that's fine. Split the difference between the other two plants and plant one there. So what I'm gonna end up having is triangles. Okay, I'm gonna finish planting up the bed with the rest of these kales and kohlrabis. Um, we eat a lot of kale in our family, so this whole bed is just gonna be kale. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out <laughs> how to cram everything else into that bed over there. Uh, but I'm also gonna do some other uh, fabric containers, which is what I do every year anyway. So I'll finish planting these up, give it a good cover. We've got a few cooler temperatures showing up in this upcoming week, so perfect timing. But I want these guys in the ground growing so I can have delicious crops before the heat hits. Now, kale is one of those crops that will actually do okay with a little bit of heat. Um, however, I prefer to get it up and going and established um, and even mostly harvested before we do hit hot temperatures. Plants like lettuces and spinach, they don't like the heat at all. So getting them in the ground now is really important so that you get the maximum amount of harvest. Let's talk about things like broccoli and cabbage. You can grow them here, but you wanna pray for a very cool spring that doesn't get hot too quickly because often broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage, these are plants that really do appreciate the cooler temperatures and when it gets too hot, they just don't perform that well. I sometimes reserve planting those crops for the fall. If you seed them in 
mid to late July, even late June, and then transplant them out mid-August, we're going in the opposite direction. We're going from hot to cold then versus what we're doing now, which is cold to hot. The hot to cold direction puts the brakes on those cool season crops and allows them to establish better and get sweeter towards the end of their life instead of having them go bitter as we get hot. I hope that makes sense. Thanks for joining me today uh, for spring gardening, getting everything prepped and ready to go. This is Lindsay with the North End Organic Nursery. Please subscribe to our channel and make sure you turn on notifications so every time we uh, put out a new video like this, you can get an update and we'll give you seasonal, up-to-date organic gardening advice as often as possible. Thanks for joining us. You can leave a comment below and I'll make sure to get back to you. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Thank you.